Good morning. Welcome to our topic for today. So, our topic is all about global e-business, how businesses use information systems. For our learning objectives, we're going to define and describe business process and their relationship to information systems. Describe the information system supporting the major business functions, sales and marketing, manufacturing and production, finance and accounting, and of course, human resource. And then evaluate the role played by systems serving the various levels of management in a business and their relationship to each other. We also would like to explain how enterprise applications and intranets promote business process integration and improve organizational performance. And lastly, assess the role of information systems function in a business. All right, to begin with, let's try to understand business process and information systems. So basically, what we are saying is information systems are all about improving business processes, which lie at the very heart of the business. And we mentioned manufacturing and production, sales and marketing, finance and accounting, including human resource. So how information systems enhance business processes? First, by increasing the efficiency of existing processes. All right, so after we have uh, improved our processes we're going to, uh, information systems will increase the efficiency of, of these processes so say in a manual system uh, if we can only sub say uh, 1000 clients every day by implementing information systems then maybe it's possible now to uh, serve 5000 or more clients okay or another way information systems enhance business processes is it could enable entirely new processes that are capable of transforming the business by automating many steps in the process okay so if we change the flow information it will make it possible for many people to access and share the same information or replace sequential steps with tasks that can be performed simultaneously in parallel and eliminating delays in decision making as we have seen in our previous discussions so there are many types of business information systems uh, let's start with functional first uh, sales and marketing. What are the different uh, information systems that we can uh, put in place under this function or under this department? Well, uh, we, can, we, we will try to identify at least three, all right, and in three different levels of management. First, for op operational managers and employees, we can have an order processing system, all right? Now, for middle managers, we can use pricing analysis information system. And for senior management, of course, uh, we can use an information systems that is capable of forecasting the sales trend. Okay, so these are just some of the information systems that we can use under sales and marketing. For manufacturing and production, we have the following uh, information systems. First, machine control. Second, we can have a production planning information system. And third, of course, we have facilities location information systems. Okay, this is for senior management. For finance and accounting, there are many, many information systems. But we can name, say, for example, accounts receivable for operational managers, a budgeting information system for middle managers, and of course, profit planning for senior managers. And lastly, for human resource, we can have training and development information system. This can be used by operational managers, compensation analysis for middle managers, 
and then human resource planning information system for senior managers. We can also study the different types of business information systems using the constituency perspective. Okay, let's start with transaction processing system. Well, these systems keep track of the elementary activities and transactions of the organization. For example, sales, receipts, cash deposits, payroll, credit decisions, and the flow of materials from one factory to the warehouse. Okay? Basically, these information systems, this transaction processing system, would answer routine questions. Information generally must be easily available, current, and accurate. Right? Next is management information systems and decision support systems. Middle management needs systems to help with monitoring, controlling, decision-making, and administrative activities. So the principal question addressed by such systems is this. Are things working well? Okay. Do we have enough cash? Do we have enough inventory? Are we producing, you know, according to capacity? These are the questions. MIS will provide middle managers with reports on the organization's current performance. Okay? Are we achieving our sales? Okay? How about our sales even last quarter or last month? Decision support systems uh, support non-routine decision-making for middle managers. So, the questions that can be answered using DSS are, say, what would be the impact on production schedules if we were to double sales in the month of December? Okay? So, means to say, uh, we have to look at our production schedules. Are we going to have another shift? Okay? How about our factory uh, capacity? Okay? Things like that. So what about what would happen to our return on investment if a factory schedule were delayed for six months? You see, this is a what if scenario where the you know, kind of questions that DSS systems would be able to answer. So executive support systems, it helps or uh, it helps senior manager managers make these decisions, for example, ESS address non-routine decisions requiring judgment, evaluation, and insight because there is no agreed on procedure for arriving at a solution. Okay, uh, Sometimes uh, these are the kind of problems that are called non-structured problems. Okay, So ESS provide a generalized computing and communications capacity that can be applied to changing array of problems. Example, the CEO of Laner Health Products, this is the largest manufacturer of private label vitamins and supplements in the US. They have an ESS that provides on the CEO's desktop a minute to minute view of the company's performance as measured by working capital, accounts receivables, accounts payable, and cash flow, and inventory. So if a CEO has this you know, information available on, on his desktop, desktop, then he should be able to make the right judgment call, an evaluation of the situation, okay? And therefore, you know, it, it will give him an insight of the current and future, you know, uh, state of the company. Another system is we call as enterprise resource planning system. Now this system collects data from various key business processes in manufacturing and production, finance and accounting, sales and marketing, and human resources, and storing this data in a single central data repository, whereby it makes possible for information to be shared across the company. So we have many enterprise resource planning systems available in the market today, and we can name some of them here.
So what are the benefits of an enterprise resource planning system? First, speed in communication throughout uh, speed of communication throughout the company. Okay. Two, make it easier to coordinate daily operations. Remember, we have an integrated system. All right. So when a customer places an order, the order transaction triggers the warehouse to pick the ordered products and then they will schedule now shipment. The warehouse will inform the factory to replenish whatever is depleted. Okay. And then four, accounting department is notified to send the customer an invoice, okay, for timely receipt of payment. And then number five, the customer service department representative will track the progress of the order through every step to inform the customers about the status of their order. So at the end, what do we have? Well, we will, we are able to serve a customer better and in return these cost satisfied customers will give us more business okay the disadvantage however are we will be locked into relationship by contract and manageability with a vendor okay so a contract can hold the company to the vendor until it expires and it can be unpro unprofitable to switch vendors if switching costs are too high imagine Based on our initial discussion, you know, uh, the investment is relatively huge, okay? Sometimes tens or hundreds of millions, okay? Inflexibility, sometimes there are vendor packages that may not fit a company's business model exactly, and therefore, customization can be very expensive, okay? And then... Number three, return on investment may take too long to be profitable. And number four, ERP implementations have a risk of project failure. Now, in any ERP implementation, we have to be cognizant of the toy box effect. Okay, so what is this toy box effect? Imagine... Uh, because of the richness of its functionalities, okay, it is possible that we might be adapting, implementing modules that we were not going to use in the in a couple of years or so. All right, so we have to be very clear of our needs, the user specifications, so that now we we will not end up spending more on functionalities modules that we may not need another would be data integrity becomes very critical so the information needs to be put into the system or there will be a domino effect okay example when a stock is moved from warehouse a to shelf floor b and then the information is not put into the system this thing will happen the system will tell someone to get the material from A, and when it is not there, they have to go looking. Okay. Second, at the same time, it is telling someone else to put new material in B, but B is full. So the person finds the original material in B and lang lags it into the system. Now we now have double the quantity in the system again, and it doesn't reorder. And so it goes on, and everyone is blaming the system. So, very critical here is data integrity. Another thing is, things have to be done consistently. So, the system is going to determine how we do things in all locations. Even within one location, special treatment may not be possible anymore without changing the configuration of the system. Example, so if the system says you can either have 0, 15, 30, or 60-day credit terms, you can no longer offer 45 day terms without changing the system configuration. If consistency can be implemented, there is good potential for cost savings, as well as getting rid of special arrangement that reduce profit. Another system is what we call a supply chain management system. Okay? So it will help businesses manage their relationships with their suppliers. 
So supply chain management systems will provide information to help suppliers, purchasing companies, distributors, and logistics companies share information about what? Orders, production, inventory levels, and delivery of products and services so that they can source, produce, and deliver goods and services in a more efficient way. So how do supply chain management systems provide value for a business? Why do we have to implement a supply chain management system? Well, the ultimate objective of an SCM system is to get the right amount of their cost or to get the right amount of their products from their source to their point of consumption with the least amount of time and with the lowest cost. And these are very good uh, strategic objectives, okay? If you can save on the time, okay? If you can deliver faster than your competitors with the least or the lowest cost, then by all means, you will be in an advantage against your competitors. Another system would be customer relationship management systems. This system will help managers or companies manage the relationship with their customers. So CRM systems provide information to coordinate all of the business processes that deal with customers in sales, marketing, and service to optimize revenue and then customer satisfaction and most especially customer retention. Okay? The, the last thing that we want is for our customers to, you know, to shift to another provider, okay? Another system would be knowledge management systems. So the, through the value of the company's products and services is based not only on its physical resources, but also on the intangible knowledge assets, okay? In fact, in the stock market, over half, of the value of the companies result from intangible assets, a large part of which is knowledge. Okay. So some companies perform better than the others because they have better knowledge about how to create, how to produce, and how to deliver products and services to their customers. So the ultimate or oh, this firm knowledge is difficult to imitate unique and can be leveraged into long-term strategic benefits okay because your competitors don't have it so knowledge management system will enable any organization to better manage processes for capturing and applying knowledge and expertise so these systems collect all relevant knowledge and experience in the company and then make it available wherever and whenever it is needed to improve business processes and management decisions. All right, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. So if we have already this knowledge, we have to store it in a central repository area so that now everybody will have access to it or those who are authorized to access it. So whenever and wherever they want it, okay, to improve business processes and management decisions. All right, so this is the end of the lecture. If you have any question, feel free to leave your comment and we shall discuss them. So for our discussion question, and you may want to answer this in your notes, okay? So adopting an enterprise application is a key business decision as well as a technology decision. So do you agree? Why or why not? And who should make this decision? So write your answer in your notes and we shall uh, discuss them later.